Hi guys, just a quick update on the video I published last week, which was the industrial electronics repair. So this is the board I was repairing. It's ready now to go back. So I'll just show you what I actually did with this. I went to the electronics shop. We have two of them in Las Palmas, the capital, and they basically had what I needed. So the relay, they didn't have exactly the model. If you see, this one is a single pole, and this is like a, a double pole, so it changes between two contacts. But what I've done with it is, the contacts here, the normally closed ones, I've just bent the legs back under. There's just bare PCB there, no tracks, and it fits. So although that's actually a changeover, and this makes a contact, this contact has not been used, okay? So it effectively works the same. So if you don't have the exact relay, of, you can just do this. Or for an example, you could just keep this type in stock and it will work for this type and for this type, yeah? So it still closes that contact when it switches on the same as this one, okay? So that's how I replaced the relay. The original relay is here, so you can see this had basically burnt contacts and it wasn't switching very well so if you look you will see that they both effectively operate the same and make a contact to there when it switches on the burnt out resistor which was this one that measured 3.9 ohms they gave me this one this is the same brand dh they said this is a suitable replacement for this the same wattage dh apparently is a spanish brand anyway so they seem to know what they were talking about with that one so the resistor was easy to replace i've refitted the two i removed while i was working on this but before i fitted these i fixed the problem with the bridge rectifier so the problem here if you saw the other video and i guess if you're watching this you would have done is that the PCB was damaged here and here and I couldn't refit the original bridge rectifier because I couldn't get a soldering iron in basically to resolder it and the underside was already damaged from a previous repair before I got the board so what I've done here if you look if you just get some uh, amount of focus on it yeah i think you can see behind here so these two diodes and these diodes by the way are six amp 1000 volt the original ones were five amp 200 volts so these are more than capable so these are soldered into the ac terminals here and here a pair of diodes so the same with the other ac terminal a pair of diodes so the two with the stripe here the positive end yeah shine a bit of light down there so you can you can see it now yeah the stripes on them okay so those two you can see i've connected a piece of wire from here down to the board there's a bit of heat shrink sleeving on so it can't short to the pin which is close to it and then the other two this one and this one which are the anodes they are connected together and then it's a bit hard to see but the wire from this point there's a little bit of heat shrink on there again let's see if we can look down this side of it i think now you can see there's a wire down there a black wire yeah which goes down to the negative end of the bridge rectifier so those four diodes effectively form a bridge rectifier and Although they were a bit big to fit in, so I couldn't get them level. I'd have preferred to use 5 amp, but this is what they had. At least it's behind these resistors, yeah. The heat shrink on here is just to add a bit of extra insulation. The wire isn't cut behind here. It's just where it's coming past the positive here. So you've got the insulation of the wire and the insulation of the heat shrink. So that if this resistor is getting hot, it will not melt the insulation on this wire. So that's why we have the heat shrink in there. The switch was relatively easy. 
once I could bend the pins a little bit just to get them into all the, the right direction. The switch is now in there, replaced six-way switch. And you can see I just need to clean it up a little bit to get the flux off, but that is soldered nicely in there. The last thing then was the 5 watt Zener diode and they had a suitable replacement so it's there. So that basically covers all the parts I had to replace on this board. With this sort of work there's no guarantee that you can repair it. You can trace around find all the faulty components that you can but at the end of the day it may not work. There could be some problem with the equipment that's connected to here for example that's caused it to blow you know really there is no way of knowing so all you can do is charge the work charge the parts and say that's as much as i can find that's faulty there's no guarantee but really with industrial electronic repair that that is the case unless you can go out on site maybe and start measuring things but even then the fact you have some chips on here with the information scraped off you don't know what they are means that there will always be a limit to what you can do so i hope you just enjoyed that quick little update you can see what work was done on it and now i'm waiting for the guy who's actually on the other side of the island to come over here and pick us up and i believe he has a uh, amplifier out of a, a powered speaker for me to look at next okay guys hope you enjoyed that very short learning electronics repair video and i'll see you all soon Ciao for now, guys.